so finally we got to the most interesting tool uh, of the verb suite and actually in this section I will talk about two modules the intruder and the comparer which is a really simple tool but uh, you often use them together so that's why I choose this place to introduce the comparer uh, and not in a separate section or something but first we are gonna start with the intruder the intruder is basically the automated uh, fuzzer where you can set the values uh, how you want to test or fuzz various inputs. So we are going to work with a vulnerability in uh, WebGoat, and that's the authentication flows and forgot password. You know, lots of applications have this feature that you can, if you forgot your password, you can request a new password, or there are different methods to solve this problem, either that you put in your email address and then you get a password reset email, or you get a new password in email, or there is some security question, where if you can answer that, then you're allowed to change your password, etc. So in WebCode, there's there is also this um, this feature. So here, there is a possibility to, to give your username. Actually, it's written in the description that your username is WebGoat, but let me just check what happens if I put in an unexisting uh, existing username. Yeah, you get a you get an error message. Did I put in the correct username, which is WebGoat? And I submit it. And there, this is they choose the security question method. So you have to put in your favorite color. Let's try green. Oh, it's not green. But uh, what's happening here is that you have a finite number of possibilities here because there are a finite number of well known colors. So, what we want to do somehow is to to have a list of colors and then test all these colors with a request and try to found, find out somehow from the response which one was the correct. You could use the, the repeater here and, and test every single color by yourself, which would actually still work with the repeater because there are not so many colors uh, usually. But if the the scenario is more complicated, like the set of possible answers is like tens or hundreds or thousands, then you wouldn't be able to test that with the repeater manually. So in this case, you can use the uh, intruder. So what we are going to do is we are going to put here, yeah, I can just try it again, like with black, and it's wrong again. Now let's go back to burp and go to the proxy and I will we'll look for that request. Yeah, it's that. You see here that the color was black and there is also another parameter called submit which is not that interesting. So we want to test this request. So we'll say uh, right click and send to intruder. Now your request appears in, in the intruder. Just a quick hint, you can give names to your tabs. So I can name this uh, password forget. Uh, it's pretty cool. I use, use it a lot in the repeater because, because I test like um, user creation or user approval or login and then I can name all these tabs and then if I come back I will see that oh th this is the request to create a user and this is the request to log in etc so if you come back later it's easier so here in the intruder what you have here is uh, yeah the attack target which is there if you send the request here from from some other uh, from some other modules and then you come to the positions and uh, then as you can see, 
here's your request and burp already marked you the the positions the possible positions. so you can test anything here but burp tries to find all the parameters in the request and but if you don't like it then you can just like say clear and like if you there are some attacks against the this host header and you can j just say add or or you can say auto again and then it will be marked marked as it uh, as it was now there is another uh, setting here called attack type since I keep forgetting it uh, what these attack types are I will always have to google it so I will just show that to you as my as well so burp attack type intruder sniper so you can see here there are quite a few documentations here we could but we could just go to the uh, ports figure website and check the definition there uh, so sniper is the most basic one what happens there is uh, you select one payload list and uh, if you have uh, different positions what you test so for instance here we have we have five positions to test and we will select if you come here to the payload there is just one payload set and then this payload set will be used for each position after each other so we have five positions here if our payload list is uh, 10 elements long then that will create five times 10 uh, requests so 50 requests will be sent then the bettering ram is uh, also one payload set, payload set but this payload set will be applied on these positions simultaneously so like the first request will have the for, first uh, value from the payload list in each places so in case you have a 10 long list of payload and uh, these five positions then you will just send 10 requests and there is the pitchfork uh, with the pitchfork you can define different payload lists for all the positions in your request and these different uh, payload lists will be applied in the position simultaneously again so that means that that in every request, the uh, all payload list will be iterated to the next one. And lastly, the cluster bomb is again you have different payload set, payload list for all the positions you mark, but um, all permutation of these payload lists will be tested with this request. So. So I think this is the most performance intensive test because uh, because here uh, since all permutations will, will will be tested you will send a lot of requests. We will just talk about the sniper. Actually that's what I use most of the time uh, because I prefer to prefer to test each parameters separately because then you see exactly what caused the problem. Like if you're fuzzing all of them at the same time and you get an error message, you don't know which parameter actually caused the, the, the er error. So you will, have, you will have to go back to the repeater or something and start like testing out which, which parameter caused the problem. But if you're doing the sniper, then, um, then, then you will see exactly uh, which parameter causes the problem because you because you only test one at, at a time. But for instance, if your target application is really slow and uh, you cannot afford to, to send like 5,000 requests, but you still want to test all the, all the uh, parameters, 
then you might choose something else which will result in, in less requests but still testing everything but after that you will have to still work to find out uh, what the problem exactly was. But now we are going to use the sniper and we don't want to test all these things here so I will just clear clear out the whole page and then I want to test this color so I will just put add then we go to the payload. Now we have to tell um, what kind of values we want to test as color, as a color par parameter. Now, um, as before, I always told you what's the difference between the the Burp Suite free edition and the pro edition, and there's a difference here as well. So there's this payload type called simple list. In the pro edition, there are like predefined lists, like uh, list to test uh, cross-site scripting, list to test uh, SQL injection, etc. You can build this list by yourself uh, and use use it from a file or something. But um, but it's pretty handy that there are these default lists for also for um, path traversal or general fuzzing and things like that. So quite a few things: usernames, passwords, whatever. So it could be useful. But as you can see, there. Are quite a few possibilities here it, dates, random numbers, characters, whatever like numbers could be useful if you see that when you're using the pro loading the profile of a user then in the URL there is this number telling probably the ID of the user so you can just test whether you can load the profile of other users and then you say that you want to test uh, test it from one until ten thousand, and step one, and then there will be ten thousand requests. So you also want to say here minimal fraction digits no, and uh, maximal fra fraction digits no, and uh, then you just use integers. So then you you will test the user IDs from one to ten thousand. That's uh, pretty straightforward. But that's not what we want to do right now, because we want to do colors. For that, uh, we still say simple list, because I created a list myself. As you can see, I put quite a few colors here and then some random text. So I will just copy this list and come back here and say Based. So that's how you can use your own list and um, you can also put it here but if you're maintaining your own list for instance for cross-site scripting or for SQL injection then, uh, then it will be easier just to paste it here all the time. There are some other options what you can do that we don't want to try now. Uh, you can experiment with this payload processing and this is just a simple thing to URL encode uh, these characters in the request. That's usually useful. So, as you can see, we're testing one parameter and there are 13 values, so there will be 13 requests sent. So, let's start the attack. For that, we have to come here to Intruder and say Start Attack. We get this warning window because um, because this, uh, the speed of intruder is limited in the free edition, you don't get this problem in the uh, pro edition. So let's start. It opens a separate fence, uh, window, and you see that there were the, how many requests were sent, and here are all, all the responses. The first one is always a baseline request. So that's the original request, which was with the color black. You might ask, how do we figure out which was interesting? What I usually do, because we have now 30 requests, but in, a, in another scenario, you could have like thousands of requests here. And you don't want to check out all the requests and responses to figure out which was interesting for you. What I first do is I order the list by length because there you will see the changes like um, usually you get the, when you're testing 
you get lots of error messages and they are usually the same so the length will be the same so like in a fuzzing like 80 percent of the responses are the same error message and you will see that from the uh, from the response length so you will start going down and like check out what's this look through the response okay this is an error message and then you will know that all other responses which have the same length are the same error message and um, this way you kind of cluster the, the responses based on the length and that will help you figure out the different clusters what they mean like uh, sometimes you get a different error message and that that's another cluster etc it also works for us because if you look at here like most of the requests except one has the same size and we can say, see that that's the same size as the baseline request. So we know that that's the error message. And there is the one with the red, which is different. Now you see that the difference is not too big. So that's like 25 bytes, no, 125 bytes, but you don't want to go, sometimes it's just two bytes and three bytes, and you don't really want to go and figure out yourself what, yourself what the difference was. So here comes the other tool, which we are looking at in this video, and that is the comparer. So what we can do, we can send requests to the comparer and surprisingly compare them. So we can choose this, um, this baseline request and say right click here and send to comparer and you see that we have now this request here and then let's go back to the intruder and say to this response as well send to comparer now on the top you choose the first request and in the bottom you choose the second and you have two options to compare them by words or by bytes. Usually we, we are using the words because uh, to compare by bytes you need to be really hardcore to, to figure out anything from the bytes. And usually it's because we are talking about HTTP plain text protocol, uh, it makes sense to look at it in words. So let's check out in words. You get this nice window, one side one request, other side other request, and which is also a cool feature, say sync view. So what I'm gonna do, I will just scroll down and look look for these colors. And if we see some colors, then we'll see that there is some difference there. Okay, so we found the difference. And so you look at it here, it says, this is the error message because it says incorrect response for WebGoat, please try again. And the other one, you see here that there is no message. And here, for security reasons, please change your password immediately. Okay, all right, that seems uh, really promising. So, uh, if we want just to go back to another thing we, we used before, which I usually do, you know, just to look at the look at the response uh, in the browser to really see what, what that is. And for that, you can say show response in browser. And then as always, we need to copy this URL and come back to the browser and paste the URL and now just to make sure the in this case the request wasn't sent again just uh, burp shows you the response in your browser so when I loaded this page no request was sent to the server and yeah you can see here that that uh, in this case, when the payload was read, 
then we actually got, got through and uh, we got all these data here, like the username, color, and then the password. So it's pretty cool. We actually cracked this forgot password functionality. We can come back and uh, try it ourselves. So username webgoat submit answer red. And then we got here what we've already seen. Password is webgoat. So that's great. That's how more or less you use the um, the intruder. One more thing I want to show you. I just close this window and go back to the intruder. In the options tab, there are quite a few things what you can uh, customize. A few things here is the, uh, the the request engine. As I said, you cannot change this in the free edition, but uh, in the pro edition, you can you, you can use different threads and you can set um, set throttle and stuff like that. Um, it can speed up your test, but for instance, if the um, if the the targeted application has some kind of anti automation measure. For it, if it sees that there are lots of requests from, coming from the same place, then that might be an attack and then start uh, re rejecting requests. Then you can set it up here to, to make it slower, which won't be too good for you because then the whole attack will be really slow, but uh, it still go, goes through. So you can just let it go and do whatever else you want. And then when it's ready, you come back and look at the, the results. And uh, this uh, grab match is also really interesting. You can set up here strings or regular expressions to look for in the responses. So we can just tick this checkbox here and say that flag results containing these expressions. You see, it's uh, usually the default list here is is um, usually part of default error messages like uh, exception, error, uh, SQL, things like that, or uh, that's also um, Oracle error message. And now, if you do our attack again with the same payload, start attack. Okay. Then you see the difference here is that we have all these uh, columns here, which says whether these expressions were found in the response or not. Now in this particular case, it didn't help us because you see red contained exactly the same uh, expressions as everything else. But uh, we could try something else. I come back here and add password. Because if you remember, here there was this, um, or no, actually, I will look for password immediately. Let's try it. And uh, yeah, that worked. So if you come here, you see that the second line is the red. And that's the only place where this password immediately string was found. So you can use this feature to not base everything on the response length, but also to look for something. So if you can figure out what could be unique on the on the page when your attack is successful, then you can put, put an expression there, and then you will immediately see if your attack was successful or not. Uh, the, the rest of the features here, I don't, don't really use often. So 
I won't talk about it right now. I suggest you to try it out sometimes, but my experience is that um, it doesn't come up uh, too many times that you need them. All right, one more thing I wanted to show is that if we come back to the comparer, I just to show you the bytes view and then you can decide yourself if it's something what you want to look at it or not uh, or whether you want to use the words instead of the bytes yes and we can scroll down here again trying to find the difference oh yeah, it was there so here is our difference Sometimes useful if you're using uh, some kind of um, response, request response body which is not plain text. It could be like um, Java objects or things like that. But uh, most of the time it's better to use the, the words feature. All right, that was the intruder and the comparer. I suggest to, to play it a little bit. You can try to solve some uh, SQL injection here, like uh, the string SQL injection, and use the intruder for that to play around a little bit. You can use the grep matching. Just try to make sure that you understand how the intruder works and how you can use it in a live scenario. That's all I wanted to see about the intruder. So thanks for watching.